In this tutorial, we are going to explore the range-based for loop control structure in C++. Let's begin with an example of a standard for loop. A typical for loop looks like this. We have a collection of elements, let's say a vector containing 10 elements, and our goal is to access each of these elements one after another and print them to the console. A standard for loop requires a counter variable that will serve as an index. Now we can access and print each element of the vector like this. Let's add a new line outside of the for loop. If we execute the code now, it will print the numbers the vector contains from 1 to 10. Now, whenever we come across a scenario like this, where we have a counter variable that starts at 0, iterates up to the length of the vector, or whatever collection we are working with, and increments by 1, it signifies that we are performing an action for each element in that vector or collection. In such situations, using a range-based for loop is a more appropriate choice. It is what we call a for each loop that executes the loop body for each element in a range. So, a range-based for loop looks like this. For parentheses. And then we have a declaration here. We will say int element. That's a new variable that will hold an element from the collection. Then colon. Then here's where we put the collection. So we will just say numbers because numbers is the collection, a vector in this case we want to loop through. Then we will have a loop body here. And in our loop body here, we are also going to output the vector element. See out, element, and then a space. This loop here is going to do the exact same thing as this loop here, but it is much more concise. So the way this loop works is that the loop body is going to execute for each element in the vector. And each time it executes, element is going to be assigned that value of the vector. So we have a copy of the vector element. First, the loop body is going to execute with element set to 1. Then the loop body will execute again with element set to 2. And then the loop body will execute again with element set to 3 and so on. So the loop body is going to run for each element in the vector. Let's remove this for loop here and let's run our code. As you can see, the output is exactly the same. Perfect. We now have a very easy and fast way to access all the elements of a collection. There is one more powerful tool we can introduce, the auto keyword. It allows the compiler to figure out the correct type of the variable for us. Let me show you how it works in a range-based for loop. Instead of writing int here, we can use auto. With auto, we don't need to explicitly specify the type of the variable element. The compiler takes a look at the collection elements and says, I see you have a vector of integers, so I'll make element an int for you. Now, if we change the type of the collection, we don't need to modify our loop. The auto keyword adapts automatically. As we said, each time this for loop is executed, the element variable holds a copy of an element of the vector. While this works fine for simple types like int, it can become inefficient when dealing with larger or more complex objects, because copying those objects can be time-consuming and memory-intensive. But we can use a reference to that element if we want to make our code more efficient. So we can add the ampersand operator after the type of the variable here. If we run the code one more time, we can see all the numbers printed again. But this time our code is more efficient because we didn't create a copy of the element. When we only need to access the elements of a collection without intending to modify them, as demonstrated in this example, we can use the const keyword. By declaring our loop variable as const, we explicitly tell the compiler that we have no intention of changing the values of the elements, and the compiler protects us in case we accidentally try to change the value of an element. But what if we want to change the elements of the container? Let's create another for loop that will multiply each element of the collection by 10. For parenthesis, auto ampersand element colon numbers. 
curly brackets. Element asterisk equals 10. This for loop changes the values of each element of the vector, and this for loop prints all the elements of the vector. Let's run the code. As you can see, all the elements of the vector are multiplied by 10. If I type const here and try to run the code again, the compiler won't let me. The compiler will stop me from modifying the elements because I have explicitly told it that I don't intend to change the values by using const. This adds a layer of safety to our code and prevents accidental modifications. That's it. You now know how to use range-based for loops in C++ to make your C++ code more concise, readable, and safe when dealing with collections of various data types. I hope you find this video useful. If so, give this video a like and subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this one. Thank you.